Hey guys, so um, I know I've been promising this video for a while and um, it's been a lot going on. I've been super busy, but now I'm kind of taking the time to really focus on my YouTube. And the first tutorial I wanted to upload is one that I recorded a long time ago um, because it was in such high demand, but I just never got the opportunity to edit it and do the voiceovers. Um, so yeah, I'm going to make this as simple as I can and I hope you guys understand. If you have any questions, as always, feel free to ask me. So the first thing you want to do is you want to get two bolts of tool and they usually have about 40 yards of tool on each bolt. Um, you can get that from Amazon. Um, typically I'll go to Amazon or I'll go to Fine Fabrics in Norcross, Georgia, and they usually have a pretty good quality of tool. It's not that really, really thin tool, which I'll use a thin or I'll use a thick, whichever one I can get my hands on, but I prefer the kind of thicker tool that has, you know, the smaller holes. So what you want to do when you get your bolt of tool, it will come with a piece of cardboard in it. You'll want to bend it before sliding it out because if you don't and you just try to pull it straight out, then it'll kind of mess your tool up a little bit to where it's not even. And you do want to kind of get at least slightly consistent size strips all the way through um if it does pull a little bit out it's fine um you can push what you can back in but yeah so what i'm doing now is i'm measuring the length of the bolt of tool i can't remember how long it was but i usually like to cut my strips into maybe like seven or eight inches um sometimes i'll do it a little bit smaller i think on this one i decided to do six yeah six inches so um, sometimes you can cut all the way through depending on the thickness of the tool. But um, when I can't, I'll just mark it with a pen every six inches or seven inches or eight inches. And then I just stick my scissors in after I make my snip and I will cut around. Still trying to keep the tool kind of layered together consistently. So after I get this cut out, I'm going to go to the machine and get ready to start my ruffles. Now I get a lot of questions about how I do my ruffles because I do them very, very quickly. Even on the full ruffle bottoms that I do on my dresses. Um, I don't do the basting stitch where you do the, the five inch stitch. I mean the, the five length stitch and then you pull it. I used to do that, that takes too long. Um, so I'm gonna finally show you guys how I do my ruffles most of the time. Okay, so now we're gonna get ready to prepare our strips. Um, a lot of people will use the ruffling foot. Um, I think I tried to fit this one on there, but it didn't fit. Okay, so you wanna place your strip at the machine and you wanna do a back stitch. You wanna stitch down the middle of that strip. It doesn't have to be precise, but as long as it's pretty accurate, and I hate I have to say this, but please use the same color thread because some of y'all be doing some tacky stuff, child. So you wanna start that ruffle and basically all I'm doing is placing both hands on each side and I'm ruffling it by hand. This takes out all the extra time of having to sew a stitch and then go back and gather or, um, or all that other stuff. It's just really, really simple and it, it works for me. And I get my ruffles the thickness that I want. One issue I see a lot of people have with um, the, the presser feet is that they can change the tension and it will change the the gathering but a lot of times they still don't get the gather that they want so this way you can get the gather exactly how you want it and now when you push your strips through you want to do it <clears throat> either in layers of two or the layers of four so i'm not sure what i had here but i want to say it was in layers of two so i'm just going to sew these all the way down doing the same thing just taking it up under there and i keep my um i keep my roll up under the machine so it just pulls up evenly and i don't have to keep readjusting 
you know my layers okay so now you want to go to your second bolt of tool and you want to spread that out a little bit on the floor and you want to cut it the length that you want your robe to be so i did from shoulder seam to floor and then i added a little bit extra just so it could kind of hang on the floor a little bit so like i said this is folded in half and from your folded side you want to measure the neck so you can see how you need to cut that so if the neck is um 14 inches all the way around you want to divide that by two so you have seven and then you want to divide that by two again and that'll give you 3.5 so i measured 3.5 and i'm just going to cut it in kind of a quarter circle if you're advanced enough then you can just eyeball it and um, cut it like that and that's typically what i do but also you can use a shirt if you have a shirt that um has a scoop neck you can use that fold that in half and use that to measure as well so now i'm cutting that out and this is my back piece hence why i'm cutting it on the back center fold okay so now i'm going to measure um my shoulder width so how far i want it to come over before i cut my armhole and again, this is something that you can kind of eyeball, eyeball. The good thing about robes is that they don't have to be particularly precise. So now I'm measuring my arm side, which is also the armhole circumference. And I'm kind of just using the measuring tape to curve it a little bit and I'm gonna mark it. And then I'm gonna cut out my armhole. You really just wanna make sure, you can go larger than the armhole um, circumference, but you definitely don't wanna cut it too small. So just make sure you have enough of an opening. So I'm carefully cutting that out, curving it down like an armhole. And then basically, why is my voice cracking today, y'all? I'm so tired. It was my baby's birthday weekend, so I'm exhausted. But um, now you wanna just cut down at an angle all the way to the bottom of your fabric piece. Okay, so now using this armhole, I am going to go on ahead and cut out my sleeves. Um, just cut a strip from the tool that is long enough to accommodate um, the full length of the arm and a little extra if they wanted to hang a little lower. I feel like the more the sleeves kind of hang, it just gives it more of that sugar daddy-esque look that you know the girls are going for. So I'm gonna cut my fabric long enough and then what I'm gonna do is fold it in half so I can cut both sleeves at the same time. Before I get in this camera, let me say, please ignore the bonnet y'all and the robe. It was early, early in the morning and I be looking a mess, but it's all good. Okay, so you want to place the fold at the very top of your arm seam. Um, go down about a half an inch. I don't know if I did it right here. Did I do it right here? Yes, I did. Just so you can have that extra for your seam allowance at the top of your shoulder. And then I'm just measuring the length of that just to make sure I have it at a good length. If it's too long, I'm gonna cut it. Um, but I think it was perfect, so I'm just kind of cleaning it up a little bit, taking a half inch off. And now without cutting through your, um, your main fabric, which is the bottom piece you had on there before, you wanna kind of follow the guide of the armhole. But you know when you're doing an armhole, you got to kind of curve it a different way just so it falls correctly. And you'll see what I'm saying as soon as I lift this piece up. Now, once I get to the bottom of the armhole, 
I am going to cut down the length of the inside arm, um, which is basically from armpit to the inside of the wrist. And I wanted flare on this one just for the extra drama. So I slanted this as well as I cut down. And now I'm just cleaning it up a little bit um, just to get it a little bit neater. Now you see what I'm saying? You see that, that little opening um, right at the base, um, the bottom of the armhole? That's what gives your sleeves like that kind of flat lay. Okay, so because this tool comes doubled, um, now I'm going to separate my two back pieces and I'm going to put them together, did I? So now just move those um, back pieces out of the way. And I say pieces because again, this tool is doubled. So I do have two back pieces and that kind of gives me a little more stability as well, as opposed to just one layer. So you'll have two layers for the back and two layers for the front pieces. So now I'm basically repeating what I did for the back panels for my front panels. And it's basically the same thing, just on fold, lay it down. It should still be your two layers. It's folded so it'll look like four. Well, it, it won't look like four, it will be four but it's giving you two layers for one side of the front and two layers for the other side of the front. Okay, so once you get that straightened out, you wanna take your two back panels, well actually you can take one of them, and you wanna fold it back in half if it did unfold, and you wanna lay it on top of the piece that you have on the floor now, and you wanna lay the fold sides together. So you're going to cut this out um, using that piece as a template. I don't know why I'm taking so long. I must be second guessing something. Do it, girl. It's right. Do it. Okay. So now we're cutting that out. Okay, so now um, I cut the notch so my shoulder seams and my um, the bottom of my armhole would match up. Um, so now I'm just gonna cut from that notch all the way down the front and I'm gonna kind of slant it a little bit just to give it um, a little bit of um, forward drape, I guess. And then on the from the armhole on down to the bottom, I'm gonna do that cut as well. So now we're back at the machine and I am going to sew um, across both my shoulder seams. So remember you have two layers for your back. So we're gonna take those two layers and we're gonna unfold them and we're gonna place them together at the shoulder seams. And then once we do that, we are going to sew the two layers of the back at one shoulder seam to the two layers of one side of our front, and then we're gonna repeat for the other side. You can do another stitch um, right next to that or um, use your serger if you want to, but I didn't. Um, this doesn't stretch at all. Like it won't be stretched. It won't be any strain put on it. So um, you don't really have to worry about that, but just clip it, make it neat. And did I decide to do a top stitch? Sometimes I also fold it over and do a top stitch, but I don't know if I did in this case. Totally unnecessary, but if you want to, just for the extra security of it, you absolutely can.
So now I'm gonna grab my sleeve and what I like to do is fold my sleeve in half. Remember that you have two layers to the sleeve. Fold your sleeve in half and mark the top of the sleeve. So you wanna mark that center point because that's what you're gonna match up to the center of your armhole, which will be that shoulder seam. So for beginners, I highly advise pinning all the way around your arm hole um, from the bottom to the top shoulder seam down to the bottom of the other side. Um, but if you're more advanced, then I just recommend pinning at the armpit or the bottom and then pinning at the shoulder seam and then pinning one time at the bottom of the other end. And then you're just going to sew all the way around. And I'm making sure to kind of line my sleeves up as they go because one is um, <laughs> curved inward and one is curved outward. So your sleeve will have a different curve. Remember how we cut it? It'll have a different curve than your armhole. So you do still want to make sure you kind of match them up together so it does flow right. So now I'm going to take my sleeves and I'm going to pin um, the bottom of the sleeves together. And I'm not going to start all the way at the wrist. I'm going to start maybe about six to eight inches up. And I'm going to sew all the way from that point to my armpit all the way down the base of my robe to the ankle or the floor. Um, and the reason why I start about six to eight inches away from the wrist is because we have to attach our trim to the end of our sleeves and it makes it easier than trying to attach it when it's fully closed. Once you get one side done, you're simply gonna repeat it for the other side. If your bottoms don't match up, that's fine because you can always trim it later um, to make that hem even. Um, nine times out of 10, I don't know what it is. Even if you cut using the same, um, you know, the same pattern, it still sometimes doesn't match up. So that's cool.
Okay, so when you're done sewing um, down the base of your robe, you wanna do a basting stitch all the way around the front, around to the back of the neck and down the other side of the front, just so you can keep those pieces together because remember it's double layer. But now we're gonna get ready to start um, pinning our ruffles on. Lord, I keep having brain farts. So we're gonna um, pin our ruffles on, but first we wanna make sure that we get a good fit. Now you can leave the robe loose if you want to, but I like when it's kind of gathered in the back because it gives it a little structure, which gives it a little more fit and flair. And it just looks nice. So starting from the top, I realized that I had a little bit extra in my neck area in the back. So I'm gonna pin that so I could just sew that down. The middle, a, a back seam is fine. If you do one, it's fine. If you don't, it's fine. Okay, so the easiest way to do a consistent gather on the back is to just take a piece of elastic. Um, I'm not sure how many inches I did it. It's really, personal preference on how you want it to look but what I'm going to do is pin it on one side and then I'm going to pin it on the other side and then I'm going to pin my pleats like I want them So now I'm just sewing down that seam that I made in the back because I had a little extra fabric on the top and I didn't go all the way down. I only took it down maybe about to the waist. Now you want to sew where you pin your elastic and you kind of want to stretch as you go and also kind of form your pleats and you could do this by eyeballing it. Or like I said earlier, you can um, go on ahead and pin it where you want the pleats to be um, if it's a specific way that you want it to look. Okay, so that's done. And you see how nicely that cinch that waist in? Because girls still want to look like they have a figure, even when they're wearing something that can be kind of frumpy. So now we're finally at the fun part, and that is attaching our ruffles. This is when we really get to see the design. So for this one, I was going to do it um, starting from the waist and then taking it all the way around. But then when I finished, I ended up deciding to add it around the neck as well. But I really wanted to make sure I had enough ruffles. This part is totally optional, but I'm just straightening it out because um, the ruffles tend to twist and you wanna go straight down that middle seam that you made. So I'm just pinning it down um, along the bottom. And I think I got kind of lazy and stopped. So go on ahead and put that bad boy in the sewing machine and you're going to again sew straight down that middle stitch that you made, making sure that your ruffles aren't twisting while you're sewing. Do a really good back stitch at the beginning because what you don't want to happen is for it to start unraveling. So you're going to do this all the way around. Now what I like to do um, when I get down to the bottom, um, especially if I didn't cut it at a curve, I like to make sure that my ruffles curve. Um, you can also do it kind of square shaped if you want to. I just like the curve look a little bit better because it lays flatter and it just, I don't know, it just, it just flows better. Okay, so um, when you run out of one trim, you wanna grab another one and you wanna push it as close to the trim that you left off with as possible. And you just want to back stitch first back onto that last trim and then forward stitch onto the new trim back stitch and then forward stitch again just so you get it really really secure
I personally did not like how thin um, the one row of trim looked. Um, but if you have a client that's on a budget, then, you know, I'm sure they'll be fine with that. But what I'm doing is I'm going right alongside of the row that I just did. And I'm just kind of moving that out the way and doing the second row as close as I can to it. And don't forget to keep twisting it so you can make sure it's laying flat. But this gives you a fuller look and um, it gives you a little more drape because it makes it heavier. And when you get to the point where um, you do have to cut your trim so it doesn't unravel, what you want to do is you want to cut it wherever you're going to cut it while leaving the other part in the machine, if that makes sense. And then you want to fold it under and pin it. And that way the threads won't unravel because the fabric won't be able to move. Okay, so remember when we sewed up our sleeve um, from about six to eight inches away from the wrist all the way to the armpit and down the side seams of our robe? This is why, because now we can lay the hem of the sleeve flat so we can attach our trim. You want to stop about um, about five eighths of an inch away from the edge because you still have to sew that down, um, you know, to the wrist. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pivot it, making sure it's still laying flat. And I'm just going to turn it and do it the same way we did our second layer on um, around the perimeter of our robe.
So now it's time to do our sash or our tie um, for around the waist, optional as well. But I do like doing it, especially if I don't do clasps or some type of closure on the front. Um, so basically what you're going to do is you're going to cut strips. You want to do it, I would say, about double the waist measurement or longer if you would like it longer or if you want the bow that's going to be tied to be longer. Um, but I just typically do double and I do it about... I say two to three inches wide. So I'm going to take my fabric right now and I'm going to cut out those strips. The easiest way to do that is to just fold your fabric um, a few times till you get just a small piece um, that's, you know, double, triple, quadruple layered or whatever. And you just want to cut across and that way you can get a um, even cut. So now we're going to take that long strip and we're going to fold it hot dog style. I know y'all remember that from school. And um, we're just going to sew it all the way around, but leaving a small space um, about, I would say, about an inch or two wide, just so you can invert it. And invert it means just flip it around. So I'm going to start um, from one corner. I'm going to sew down. And then I'm going to pivot. And I'm sewing about... Um, a eighth of an inch from the edge, quarter of an inch, eighth of an inch, doesn't really matter. So you want to pivot, keeping it flat, you want to sew down. So normally I'll stop in the middle and leave a little gap and then go a few inches down and continue all the way down and around. But I see that I just ended it at one side without closing that side off and then I flipped it. And um, now I'm taking my loop turner and I'm gonna stick that through. If you don't have a loop turner, um, there are different options you can use and I'll explain those in another video for how to turn your um, spaghetti straps, your um, what is this called? Your um, <laughs> ties and all kind of stuff like that. Yeah, there we go. So I'm just cleaning that up a little bit. And I'm going to go on ahead and flip it.
So now clean up the end that you left open and you are simply going to fold it inward about a fourth of an inch or an eighth of an inch and just tack it down on the outside. Do the same thing on your closed end, and by the same thing, I mean just doing a top stitch, just so they look similar. Then you're going to sew all the way around um, about an eighth of an inch, fourth of an inch again. Um, I'm going to sew all the way around just so the belt, that's what it's called, a belt, so the belt lays flat. Okay, so now we are done, you guys. Um, look at how beautiful and full this is. You can take the layers um, and make them as thick as you want. You can make the ruffles longer. Um, you can fill the whole damn thing up if you want to um, with the ruffle trim. Just know you have to get a lot more fabric. Um, but yes, I love how it came out. Like I said, I did end up, oh, and look at our belt, cute. So I did end up going higher on the ruffles and I will add that photo in as well. So this bad boy turned out so beautiful and it was worth all the work. I absolutely loved it. My client loved it. Look how full the bottom looks. Of course, you can do this in any color. I loved the green that uh, my maternity client chose. She looked gorgeous. You can also do different styles um, once you learn this technique. Now, this one is my absolute favorite. I call this the Sugar Daddy Deluxe. If you want me to do a tutorial on this one, please drop a comment below and I can teach you how I did the tiers and how I also filled the top of it and did the sleeves. So thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Um, every video you watch, like, comment, share, and every time you subscribe, it really helps my channel a lot. I really want to do this full time. Um, so, yeah, make sure you do that for me and stay tuned for way more videos.